the grip that's best suited for the serve is continental. So when we look at the racket handle, remember all racket handles are octagonal or eight-sided. We're going to give those sides numbers. Starting on top, we've got number one, this little bevel on the sides, number two, three, four, and then fives on the bottom. The same thing for a left-hander going the other way. One is always on top, two is the small bevel on the side, three, four, and fives on the bottom. Now using the hitting hand, the reference points that we'll use, the index knuckle on the inside of the hand and the heel of the hand, those two X's we want to place on number two. That's going to give us a continental grip. So when we put the, in, the index knuckle and the heel of the hand on number two, that gives us our continental grip, which is best suited for the serve. Now when you have the continental grip, this will make it easy for your wrist and your forearm to snap as you go to hit your serve. As you come back, relax the arm. Now the hand is on the side of the handle. You see how I can snap my wrist nice and easy. On the other hand, if you were at number three, an Eastern grip, this inhibits the snapping of the wrist. But when you move your hand to the side to number two, the wrist snaps much more freely. So the continental grip is really the one you want for your serve. If you're on number three, try uh, an Eastern grip, try and work your way towards number two, the continental grip. That is the one you want for your serve. The toss can be one of the toughest parts for many players. And if the toss is not in the right spot, it's very difficult to develop a consistent serve. I teach what is considered an advanced loop toss, but I've found that beginners and even young children can soon get the idea with a little practice. Now to start off, how do you hold the ball? You don't want to hold the ball in the palm of your hand or in the fingertips. You want it in between. I hold it somewhat like an, I'd be holding an ice cream cone. I like the palm of my hand facing sideways as well, like this. I don't like the palm up because it puts tension in my arm here. And remember, I don't want any tension when I'm serving. I want to be as relaxed as possible. So that's how we hold it for the toss. Now remember, the weight is going to be forward on the front foot, arms nice and relaxed at the side. Now, the first movement again is both hands come back. Both hands come back. Remember that movement. This gives you shoulder rotation, which is going to give you the power you want. Now, both hands come back. When the toss hand reaches the belly button here, this is where we loop, and we loop forward. So it's forward, back. When you get to the belly button, you're going to loop forward again. OK, that's the key point. Many players will start forward and go back and toss straight up, now you're hitting the ball off your back foot. You're not getting your weight into your serve, so you lose power. So remember, forward, come back. When you get to the belly button, you're going to loop forward again. Loop forward and get the toss out in front. That way you can get your weight into the serve. So remember, that looping motion gets you out in front. That's a key thing. And I like this loop because it gives you a toss that you can use for the rest of your life. And it's the most efficient toss you can have. OK, now let's try a serve. Remember, we're going to lean forward. Weight starts forward. Arms and hands nice and relaxed at the side. Remember, the first movement is to rock back. That rocking motion is going to give you rhythm and momentum. Remember, when the toss arm reaches the belly button, we're going to loop forward at this point, so we're leaning into the court and we get our weight into the serve, which will give us power. Remember, we start forward, back, and then forward again. That's key. Remember, if you're coming back and you toss straight up, you're going to be hitting the ball off your back foot and you're not going to get the power you want. You're not going to get your weight into your serve. So this little loop is a crucial part of the serve. You've got to get that loop leaning this way. Lean forward, out into the court. So here we go, we're going to hit one, forward, back, forward. Okay, so that's the idea. It's forward, back, forward. That's a subtle thing, and that's probably the toughest thing to get on this loop toss. But once you get it, you really have a much more efficient toss and something that will last a long time. So work on it. 
Many times when players are having trouble with their serve and they're hitting the ball in the net, their friend on the sideline says, toss the ball higher, as if it's a cure-all for everything. But in actuality, you're making it more difficult for yourself when you toss the ball higher. As an example, say this is as high up as you can reach. If you toss the ball up out of your reach, now you have to wait for the ball to come down, which can slow down your swing, number one. Now the ball stops for a millisecond in midair and starts to drop at the rate of gravity. As it's dropping, it's picking up speed. Now here's your hitting zone. Now as the ball's dropping, remember it's picking up speed, so it's going fast through your hitting zone. On the other hand, if you toss just to the peak of your reach, the ball stops in midair for that millisecond and starts to drop at the rate of gravity. But it's dropping slower here. And remember, this is a good place to hit the serve in the upper half of the racket. But remember, on a toss just to the peak of your reach, you have 10 times more time to hit the ball. Remember that. It seems like you're getting more time on a high toss, but you're not because the ball's dropping through your hitting zone faster. If you haven't developed a good throwing motion, practice with a friend or against a wall. Here are some key points to remember. You can use two balls to get the idea of the hand's movement on the serve. Okay, you start with your weight forward. You bring both hands back together. Now notice how the balls are moving on the same level. Now once the hitting arm reaches the horizontal, at this point the shoulder is going to turn towards the ball toss. As it does, the arm is going to go spaghetti here. That means just relax the arm, break the elbow, let the arm go spaghetti. It's also essential at this point that the palm of the hand does not turn up. Notice how the palm is down. At this point, the hand's first movement is this way, up like I'm going to salute or tip my hat. So the hand moves this way with the palm down. This is one of the most crucial things you need to learn on your serve. At this point, if the palm goes up, you're going to get a patty cake serve. Your arm will never form that nice loop that gives you a fling or a nice throw. So remember, start with two balls, Get the, the idea of the hands moving together. Hands come back together and then up together. At this point, remember the toss would be released. Now the shoulder's going. The hitting arm goes spaghetti at the shoulder and go up towards your contact point. So work on that throwing motion. It's essential for a good serve. On the flat serve, the racket is moving forward and striking the back side of the ball. The racket is still going somewhat low to high. This will impart just a slight amount of topspin. Even though it's called the flat serve, there's usually a little topspin imparted to increase your first serve percentage. Very rarely will you see a ball traveling through the air with no spin. But the, the uh, flat serve, you're hitting the back side of the ball on the flat serve. Notice how I use the rocking motion to get my weight into the serve. Notice the ball of the front foot comes off the ground as the weight transfers back. Then step on the accelerator and push up and out into the court. Notice here how my palm stays down and the ball toss is released about nose height. By keeping the palm down, watch now as the racket makes a perfect loop, enabling the racket to pick up speed. Once again, the flat serve. Notice the ball goes straight ahead after the bounce.